So some of the audio throughout this interview is actually kind of messed up, so I do apologize for that, guys. But also a huge shout-out to a toy kind of mood on Instagram for helping me film this interview. But with those things being said, man, go check out a toy kind of mood on Instagram, and I apologize for some of the audio cutting out. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we are here live at San Diego Comic-Con 2023 to interview Steve Ozer and Bill McKenna here with the WWE Mattel design team. Very excited, fellas. How are we doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, I think this is the last interview of the weekend for us, so it's been a great Comic-Con. Bill, how are we feeling over here? I'm doing well. I got a little bit of caffeine in me, so I'm ready for the home stretch of Comic-Con, and uh, let's do it. I don't think a little bit of caffeine is going to do it, but we'll see. We'll see how you go we'll here. See, so we'll see how we saw a lot of great figures revealed today, and or not just not today, but over the past few days. I feel like I'm living in a time warp here, but. We saw a lot of exciting things. I have a lot of questions for my viewers that I want to ask them. So we're going to just dive straight into the Q&A and we will uh, get it started. So uh, I had a question here about the Fo Faces of Foley 3 pack. We see that on the uh, Cactus Jack figure and on the Dude Love figure, we do see cloth goods and that the Classic Mankind does not see cloth goods, even though we saw some in the Superstars figure. Was that a, uh, a cost cut thing? Was that a budget thing? Or, or what was the deal there with not deciding to go with cloth goods across the entire pack? No, it's just because the existing piece that we already developed for Mankind was uh, appropriate and worked well, whereas the previous Dude Love shirt, some people had issues with the, uh, the using Tampo to, to recreate the tie-dye patterns. When we came time to reissue Dude Love as part of the Three Faces of Foley, it was one of the things that we could do to differentiate the original figure from the new one. And with Cactus Jack, it was that was the best way to recreate his... Uh, the outfit that he wore in 1992 was this match with Sting that the uh, that the figure is recreating. So it's just just determining what was most appropriate. Okay, so on my channel, my viewers know Johnny Gargano. There is a specific thing that all of his figures include. I don't know what what it is. None of us really know what it is there. But on my channel, we we refer to it as Johnny Gargano syndrome, and that is where they get the smaller kick pad mold here, where it's like the shorter boots with the kick pad feet. And uh, we were wondering why you why why couldn't you switch out the lower legs for maybe an AJ Styles lower legs? Because we saw it on the fan takeover version. The Wolverine version had that similar look. Is it just a uh, something that you, you'll you address in the future? Is it something that maybe you, you just missed out on and it wasn't priority? Or, or what what's your thought process there? So I, I can speak to this one. Uh, we're in the midst of switching to uh, the pinless double jointed legs uh, and because we're developing those things and these still are early prototypes the Johnny you see reflected uh, has that kind of evolution of the the new pinless legs talking with partners in Asia to see if we can switch things back to the uh, and takeover style boots uh, but because of that transition you are kind of seeing this outcome as we go through the development process of the figure Okay, interesting, interesting. Also, we saw the prototype back in LA. It had like the, I think it was the Seth Rollins, like Elite 93 kick pads, but it was plugged into like, and it made this like weird gap, which is probably why you wouldn't want those, that mold, because it, it had like a substantial gap between why it. it wasn't used. Yeah, there's, with the new process, there's like, to figuring out like sometimes the new parts don't exactly line up with the older parts as you expect them to, maybe want them to. So in some cases, stuff happens where you get samples where they revert to the old parts, and that's what happened in this instance. That makes sense. I could I could see where that would happen. So we saw in Elite Series 105, we're getting uh, Scott Steiner, which is uh, a figure that a lot of people have been wanting. We didn't get him in the in the crowdfunder, of course. Everybody was disappointed in that, but you guys really delivered here. He's got a really unique thing going on. He's got new arms, it looks like. He's got a new torso. Just talk about that a little bit, and, and what you guys uh, are you guys proud of that figure? What what's uh, what would you change? You like it? What's what's the deal? Yeah, I'm really happy with how that figure turned out. Obviously, for someone with Scott Steiner, who had a very distinct, especially his upper body was very distinct, we didn't actually have parts that matched it exactly. So we created a new torso, very bulky, very ripped. And we also created new arms. Uh, the challenge on him was he had very big arms, but when he deflected his bicep, like his bicep, um, you know, it was almost like cartoonishly large. Yeah. So it was a struggle to like, do we represent, you know, when the arms are at rest, we want to represent the bicep. But if we do like a fully flexed out bicep, it'll look kind of a little freakish on, on, on the figure, for lack of a better word. So I, we went with like a sort of an in-between look for the bicep, which I think works out really well because it's definitely by far the largest actual bicep, sorry, I didn't no, realize, you're fine, you're fine. the largest bicep, uh, tooled bicep that we have on a figure. So 
when you can have him as he's posing out here, flexing his uh, flexing his uh, biceps. You know, they 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 pop larger than the biceps on any figure that we've ever produced. Absolutely, I think he looks fantastic. I actually saw him sitting at a at a booth by himself earlier. He's just chilling there, even with the chainmail on. He's still just rocking it. I don't know. He's going to be very busy, very soon. Signing figures. Uh, yeah, I know. I was like, if I had that Elite 105, I would go over there and get it, but, you know, it is what it is. So with the new top picks wave, we see that it is, uh, the lineup is Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and John Cena, correct? That's right. Okay, so is it going to be these specific gears that we're seeing them here, or will there be a deco change or a, a redo? Like, are we going to see a new Cena Elite, or is it, a, is it a reuse of the Elite 95, and is Roman an Elite 103 re-release as well? Uh, no, Roman and Cena are straight re-releases, and then... Uh, Cody and Seth are new decos. The Cody and the Seth in different ways, but they are different decos. Okay, so so moving forward, are we going to see one new deco top talent and then two re-releases? Uh, most of the time. Uh, we do account for new deco in, in top picks, uh, but it is, it is a lot of uh, reuse because it's it's just a way to keep that you know a list talent the, the one that moms or kids or brand new fans want to be able to find right away. Uh, so because of that, you will see a lot of like reissues of, of popular or you know what should be demanded figures, uh, and we try to sprinkle in a little bit of freshness there uh, in each wave. So that's what we saw out of the Cody Rhodes and the Rey Mysterio and the Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle was Elite 99. Rey Mysterio was Elite 92. I think no, it was Elite. 87, I think, or something like that, but it did get the double jointed arm upgrade. But that's good to know. And this, this isn't new. Like since the inception, since Wave One, I think we had Braun Strowman with the ambulance door, right? Like that's always been the thing with with top picks. You're going to get a little bit of new, and you're going to get some uh, re-releases of what should, should be standard issue figures. For sure, we saw that with Elite 52 Seth Rollins as well. But they did add the belt buckle that one time, and then Braun Strowman, as he stated, is also one of those figures. So that's interesting. It's cool that you don't really notice it until like way later. We didn't even put that together. I've never even thought of that until just now. So that's kind of wild, especially for me to miss something. That's that's. I didn't miss it. Cut, we're cutting that part out. We also saw a new Paul Bearer Elite 106 figure. I do believe is that Elite 106. Yeah, I think it is at this point. Yeah. Elite 106 Paul Bearer here. We see a brand new torso. Really captures the size, I think. I think last time that I think the last one was pretty good too. The last couple of Paul Bear figures, I think, were serviceable. I think they got the job done as well. But we're seeing a new leg mold here. We're seeing a new torso. Um, is there uh, any particular reason uh, why you thought that the last one should be upgraded? You just felt that that one wouldn't suffice. You wanted to get some new tooling in there. Yeah, we're always trying to improve our product offering, especially when it's someone that's been released, you know, previously that we feel there was room for improvement. Obviously, Paul Bear was. Um, was a very, uh, you know, had a large presence that like a previous torso maybe didn't capture as well. So when, we, when we're gonna, you know, when his, when his place comes up in the lineup again, we wanna make sure that we, uh, you know, are at representing his uh, actual appearance more accurately. And, and I, I think the original service that those first few years of Paul in, in WWE, uh, and then you know, as he got a little bit bigger, uh, I think this this figure is the perfect representation of that. And we've been trying actually for years to make this happen, and had to keep pausing it because Bill wanted to get it absolutely right. And I mean, from the looks of, of that test shot, it, he, he's nailing it. Absolutely. I also noticed the new uh, sculpting here on Roxanne's boots. That's a brand new boot sculpt there. Yeah, absolutely. There's a uh, new boots, new torso. And obviously, new head for sure. And I uh, one thing that I, I think it's actually a new sculpt on the NXT Women's title. It's a smaller scale version. Uh, it's not just the previous male version with the the the, the women's deco on it. It's a smaller, similar to what we did when we did the Elite 100 Becky. We actually scaled down the title to be uh, to be more uh, in scale to the women's proportions. Absolutely, I think y'all have done a great job with that as well. I think it's really. Uh, continue to get that detail, that sense of detail that we like to see. Also, uh, about the women's figures, uh, Elite 104 Dakota Kai, I think, is the most re recent, uh, I, I wouldn't say victim of this, because I think it gets the job done, but making a step forward maybe in the women's figures on the feet, I think those boots we've seen for a while now, uh, they're very similar to basic boots, uh, Elite 53 Alexa Bliss style boots, where it's uh, they don't have quite an ankle rocker, it's more of like a basic boot. Are you guys looking into maybe fixing that, giving them that more elite articulation? I know, I know you want to get reuse, of course, but you want to uh, continue is, to... With, like, with the smaller female feet, sometimes it's just a matter of fitting all that, that rocker portion in. Like, you could do it, but it would, it would require a larger foot, and then it's out of scale, and then it can look a little awkward. So it's one of those things where... He, I, I, my, to me, the aesthetics of the figure sometimes are paramount over, you know, the range of the, the posing. And this in, that's one of the instances where 
the sacrifice has to be made to uh, ensure that, you know, she's not coming out with like feet that kind of look like clown shoes. For sure. I can, I can attest to that for sure. I think that, uh, aste I think aesthetics, you, you got to find the scale, right? You got to find the scale between the aesthetic and the, and the posability of the figure for sure. So we also saw something that was on my wish list for a very long time is actually removable watches. I've said this on you know, on the channel multiple times. Uh, guys like Roman Reigns promo, cutting a promo, he's got a wristwatch on. Of course, he's not the first one to wear a wristwatch, as countless others have too, but we see the uh, removable style gauntlet wristwatch. Uh, Hasbro's done it in the past with previous figures. Now we can maybe expect him on a Stone Cold Steve Austin. A Rock, as we're seeing here, Kevin Nash in the Monday Night Wars line is also getting a removable watch. Uh, I popped hard for that. What do you think about that? It was just a matter of when to work that tool into the lineup that made the most sense. And I think with the uh, the rock, I guess we call him casual rock, with the loafers, and the, the idea was to capture him sort of in all his uh, casual casualness. And, you know, part of that is, you know, wearing the jewelry and the wristwatch that you don't necessarily wear into the ring. And subsequently, now that we have that part tooled, we can reuse it again and again on, on uh, items like the Kevin Nash and Stone Cold and possibly other uh, figures down the line. I think it's because I've been nagging him for years to do the watch, and he didn't, he wanted me to shut up. <laughs> I love I, it. I tuned it out, you know, the whole time. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I, I pop hard. Probably one of my favorite things, actually, because now um, I don't know if you, you want to buy multiple three packs, you know, of the Rock, but I do love that Rock figure. But uh, you probably gotta, you got to put that watch on your Ric Flair's. Oh yeah, I mean countless. I'm all, I got ten fix-ups in my head ready to go with the watch there. So maybe you got to release a, a wristwatch set. Ooh, okay. okay. Tin pack, just all wristwatches. And that, and that line lasts one wave. <laughs> yeah, there you go. MDT exclusive. Sorry, fellas. Also, um, on the Hogan three pack, speaking of three packs, we touched on the Foley one. We also have the Hulk Hogan three pack. Now, this is something that I would personally want, and maybe I have to get up there in age to where it's like nostalgic for people. I'm not exactly sure, but I would like to see a jersey version John Cena, basketball jersey, baseball jersey, football jersey, three pack. John Cena, what do you think? Well, what's John Cena's 40th anniversary with WWE? That would be 2042. There you go. 15 years, or no, 20 years from now. I'll be okay. Yeah. That, uh, so the the math lines up there, right there. But alive. really, I was thinking, is Hulk Hogan and Foley the only ones you consider for this pack? Are you looking at maybe doing more people like this? Uh, are there things in the pipeline possibly for potential other characters? Well, I mean, we, we kind of started these box sets once again with uh, the Raw anniversary set. Uh, you see the, the Then Now uh, Forever Together box set. So, yeah, there, there's going to be more. Um, they're successful. People seem to like them. Um, we do want to lean into special moments, right, because that gets retailers excited. It gets fans excited. Um, so when you see these moments pop up, uh, and you can only do one at a time, right? So if there's like two anniversaries happening and at the same time, like you can't get two box sets into Target, sorry. Um, but yes, we, we're going to keep our, our eyes and ears open and be Googling these dates and, and trying to remember them and keep doing these box sets. That's beautiful. I like to hear that right there. I like the bo the box sets personally. I think they really, uh, I don't know, there's something nostalgic about them a little bit. You know, they kind of throw you back to Jack's days, things like that. But um, that sets actually the four packs hitting retail like today. People are finding it right now at this uh, at Targets as I'm recording this. People are finding it in the wild. If you find them now, don't sleep on it. I'm definitely not sleeping on it. I'm grabbing it. Definitely going to be grabbing it for sure there. All right, so a lot of people have been hitting me up. They're wondering. We saw uh, Survivor Series Shawn Michaels back at WrestleMania Superstore, not WrestleMania Superstore, at those reveals. We saw it at the Mattel Design Center when we got to tour and do all the different things that was so incredible, by the way, which I greatly appreciate, as we've said many times. But we're seeing here that this uh, early sample does have black pants instead of the uh, the brown that's probably more accurate. What uh, are, is that going to be changed? Is it still time to change that? What is your thoughts there? I think, you know, we touched upon this earlier, like, th these are, for some of these figures, the first time we're actually seeing them in person. Uh, so we're unpacking boxes and frantically setting up the booth. So we need to go through the formal review process on these things. Um, so yeah, of course, after Comic-Con, we'll review all this stuff that's outstanding and take a look and, and see what can be affected. So Sh Sean's on the list. Perfect. Yeah, there you we, go. Uh, I mean, yeah, as he said, like, some of this stuff is like, we, we have to, like, make choices. Like, and I know sometimes when I show something, there's always the word in the back of your head. It's like, I know if I put this out, like everything everything about this is great, except it's not reading as the dark brown that it's supposed to be. You run the risk when you when you show something that's like first sample before all the final changes are made, 
that you know the fans will focus in on something that's not quite correct. But if you know the fact is, this is a you know this this the Survivor Series way. This is the first time we're showing it in the public, and it's you know in in the um, the first samples that came from the factory. So that you know it is an ongoing process, and we are you know updating it to match uh, you know what the final product is going to be. But we want to get this out in front of people as soon as possible, and if that meant you know, showing Shawn Michaels where the pants are a little darker than they will be in final production. Sometimes you just have to take that risk and, you know, you know, sort of take the, uh, the comments that you know are going to come knowing that it's already being, you know, worked on. And I think, you know, here's another example, like Rocky Johnson. When you zoom in, these are clearly hand paints and samples, right? So the paint's going to be off of what final product is or what you see on the renders, right? We, as people who understand the collector, know that you want to see things as early as possible. Um, so you have to decide, like, do you show it as early as possible, knowing that you're only at, you know, 20%, 30%, 40% of the process? Um, or do you just hold that back and nobody gets any information and there's no excitement? So yeah, you have to think about those things. And we prefer uh, being more transparent and showing you stuff and getting you excited uh, so you know what's coming. Um, I think that's much better than holding it close to the vest until it's final product ready uh, because then it just drops and it's like, okay, that's fun sometimes, but you know, we'd rather not have that. For sure. Absolutely. And we appreciate early access or anything new that's shown off. I greatly appreciate it. Obviously, I, I always want to know exactly what's coming. So I always appreciate the new reveals and stuff like that. So uh, back to the Rocky three pack actually, which I think is very unique. Um, what came about with that? What was the, uh, I mean, I, I saw a lot of people saying this is so random. What, what do you have to say? Do you think it's random? Do you think that, uh, is there a special anniversary? Is it just uh, an example where you have maybe uh, some names that you can you can finally make, or, or what's going into that? Well, I mean, Young Rock is, or was a hot show. Uh, it won't be continuing, but but it's a fun show. Uh, it's very popular. And sometimes, you know, retailers present us with, with opportunities, right? Like, we, we work closely with our retail partners, in this case, Walmart. Um, and it's, it's, you know, something they were interested in, uh, and it developed you know, into, into what you see here. Um, so it's through those talks and those partnerships and, and where the opportunity lies. Sometimes it's us just keeping ideas, you know, in the vault when it's ready to go for these opportunities and other times things are presented to us. So here, here's a case of, of uh, the latter. Um, and I think it's gonna work out because, you know, you know, Hype Chief Peter Maivia, we've wanted to do that for so long and this gave us the perfect chance to get him into the line. I think it's really unique. I like it a lot because uh, I love, anybody that watches the channel knows that I appreciate uh, figures that aren't necessarily the ring gear, right? You know, suited figures, figures of guys and their, you know, their promo attires. You see them walking backstage, doing interviews, things of that nature. I appreciate those kinds of figures because they're really unique. Most of the time they're just, uh, they stand out because it's not Austin in his black trunks. It's Austin in his shirt and jean shorts. So it's really awesome. So I appreciate that. And also I wanted to talk about the Rocky because uh, it looks like he's got um, new boots so here. This is a new oh, boot sculpt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, Rocky Johnson. I'm really because uh, in the when the reference I got in him the first time he had the boots, you know, laced on the sides, but I didn't have that tool up uh, when when that first figure was released. So when he was going to be released here. And you, you know, trying to determine like what can we do? If you already have the, the previous one, like what can we do as the upgrade for this one? And then it was like, well, it's obvious we have to tool the new boots with the side lacing. And luckily, there, I think uh, there are I think there are other superstars that can utilize that boot mold. You know, both in both in the current line and in the past. So it is nice to have that side lacing boot now in the lineup. For sure, I noticed it yesterday. I think I was walking through, and I said, "That's actually a new boot mold," and I actually enjoy those boots a lot. So they look really clean. I think you guys did a fantastic job. Also, the new loafer sculpt is also beautiful. Yeah, that was um, that was a fun one. That's something. This is another one I've always been getting like the as casual rock in the lineup. And uh, yeah, you have to really nail the loafers to really sell the figure. And that one, it took a little bit of a of a finagling to get like the 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 lacing. And the stitching on the loafer is uh, just right, and uh, I think we—I think that we have. I like it. I like it. I put. I'm gonna put myself in house shoes now, just straight up slippers there. But hey, WWE talent, wear loafers on TV, and we can make a figure of it now. There, there you go. There you go. Uh, big red boots. I saw people after that cliff of Seth Rollins. People have been uh, clamoring for that. They've been putting it over and have. Wear generic shoes, not shoes we would have to license. <laughs> there you go. That's a big check. I think you'd have to cut. So. Uh, Probably don't want to do that one, but I think that's all the questions that I have for now. I appreciate you guys taking the time out to meet with me here, San Diego Comic Con weekend. Certainly, I'm sure I'll interview you guys in the future. Can't wait for those times as well, but I appreciate you guys for having me and taking the time out to answer our questions, and I just greatly appreciate it.
Thank you. Thank you very much for coming by. Yeah, thanks for all you do, and uh, we'll see you soon. Absolutely. I'm out. <laughs>